This winner's prison is a nightmare for all women, as they are taken away by male guards if they break the rules of the prison. The more beautiful the female inmates are, the more horrible the treatment is. And some women are pregnant with the guards' babies. But the dark life is still not improved, and the mothers can only choose to give birth in their cells. The beautiful Elizabeth used to live an enviable life with her handsome boyfriend. Elizabeth was in a long-distance relationship with her boyfriend, so she often traveled by plane to see him. As the two of them enjoyed their time together, it was some time for them to part ways. Her boyfriend and his friend dropped Elizabeth off at the airport. It was a goodbye moment for the two of them. Little did she know that her boyfriend and his friend had already betrayed her. They had secretly placed a large amount of drugs in Elizabeth's keys. Once Elizabeth got through security and arrived at her destination, they could make a lot of money. And if anything went wrong, Elizabeth would take the blame. So why not? But Elizabeth, who had no idea, was in a worse situation. She was caught by plainclothes police at the baggage exit. With the physical evidence in front of her, Elizabeth was at a loss as to what to say. A policewoman then examined her body to check for more drugs. Elizabeth was taken into criminal custody, stripped and registered, and placed in a cell, isolated and alone. She couldn't hold back her tears when she saw her boyfriend begin in her cell. She was terrified but didn't know how to defend herself. On the other end of the phone, her boyfriend promised that it would find a way to bail her out and clear her name. As the days went by, instead of getting a response from her boyfriend, she got 10 years in prison. Elizabeth was transferred to the Drag California Women's Penitentiary. Looking out the window, Elizabeth was depressed, not knowing what to expect. After she was admitted to the prison, she went through the usual procedure. After taking pictures and pressing her fingerprints, Elizabeth was taken to a three-person cell. Looking at the poor newcomer like a kitten, one of her roommates rolled out of bed and taught her a lesson. Her new toiletries were thrown on the floor, and a fight ensued between the two. The commotion soon attracted the guard, who hadn't had time to go far. She cursed and recuffed Elizabeth and took her to the warden's office, saying she'd been in her cell for five minutes and was causing trouble. The warden ordered her uncuffed and went through Elizabeth's file. With no prior record, she didn't look like a drug dealer. Elizabeth insisted that she was wrongly accused and that she didn't start the fight, but that it was self-defense. The warden scoffed at her statement. As warden, she didn't care if Elizabeth was guilty or not, since someone had handed her Elizabeth, because any prisoner in the prison has to do what she says, or she'll make them suffer with the warden's authority. Elizabeth didn't dare say another word. Then the warden sentenced her to a month without seeing her family. To make matters worse, Elizabeth had just gotten involved with another inmate. The warden transfers her to a group cell full of villains, a collection of female hoodlums from all over the city, led by Catherine, the bus in blue. Catherine is instantly attracted to Elizabeth's unique aura. Elizabeth was also keenly aware of the passionate look in Catherine's eyes. At this moment, she may not know that a bloodbath is waiting for her. Prisoner friend kindly told Elizabeth that Catherine, who's always trying to it on her, is not a good person. If she wanted to get out of here alive, she had to stay away from Catherine. Later, Elizabeth was approached by Catherine again while she was scrubbing the toilet. She offered to use her connections to help Elizabeth get an easier job. Even though she knew it would come at a price, Elizabeth said yes so she wouldn't have to spend her days in a smelly toilet. At night, Catherine brings her a snack before she goes to bed. This time, Elizabeth no longer ignored her and decided that Catherine wasn't as bad as the others had made her out to be. The next day, instead of scrubbing toilets, Elizabeth was assigned to the laundry room. Before her shift ended, Elizabeth went to the warehouse alone to sneak back some laundry detergent. Just as she was about to leave, she noticed her sweaty cellmate humbly asking Catherine for drugs. But Catherine said indifferently that if she didn't have the money, then it was a no-go. She was so upset that she started threatening Catherine and claimed that she would reveal all of her shameful secrets. Upon hearing this, Catherine had her henchmen inject her with a syringe of air, and then, as they laughed uncontrollably, she was killed. A death in prison is a big deal. The warden sent for Catherine. Catherine neither admitted nor denied the death of her cellmate. The warden is very unhappy with her arrogance and scolds her that if she continues to act like this, their collaboration in drug trafficking will be exposed sooner or later. On the other hand, Catherine's henchmen, I see, took the opportunity of taking out the garbage and the guards' indulgence to get a big bag of drugs that had been placed in the garbage gun. I see secretly hid some in her foundation box for personal gain, but the next day it was seized by the warden, who blamed I see for the murder of the inmate. Catherine still hasn't given up on Elizabeth, but having witnessed the entire murder, she's now afraid of Catherine. She never had the courage to tell the truth to save herself. As a month passed, Elizabeth finally met her boyfriend, whom she had longed for. She says she doesn't want to spend another day in this prison and hopes he'll clear her name and get her out of here. 
but her boyfriend told her to accept the situation. In a flash, Elizabeth realized what was going on and got up and left in disappointment. For the rest of her life, Elizabeth stopped feeling sorry for herself. She began to use her time off to work on her physical fitness and threaten the warden with the truth about the death of the female inmate. Not one to give in easily, the warden secretly authorized the hoodlums to kill Elizabeth. But apparently, they underestimated how Elizabeth had changed from the inside out. She was no longer the pathetic little pet she'd been, and the two hoodlums were about to pay the price for their haste. She hit the woman behind her with a backhand so hard she couldn't stand up. And finally, she cut her arm with a razor-sharp blade that her opponent had brought with him. The screams brought out the guard, who knocked Elizabeth unconscious with a single blow. When she awoke, she found herself in a small, dark cell. A male guard knocks on the door and offers to let her out if she'll give herself to him. But his advances are met with a resounding no from Elizabeth. Next door, I see is in withdrawal and starts convulsing, and she's finally carried out by the guards. A whole day passes, and Elizabeth finally gets a small glass of water. Hungry, she drank it without thinking about the bugs in the water. A week of difficult confinement passed, having lost thousands of pounds. Elizabeth finally returned to her cell block. Everyone is amazed that she made it out alive. After a good day's sleep, Elizabeth had finally recovered. Her meals, which she had previously regarded as pig food, had become delicious. When Elizabeth was confronted by the hooligan, she could hardly resist hitting her. Her new summit, Spider, stops her, saying that she doesn't need to put herself in harm's way again just for the sake of a quick fight. But instead of letting Elizabeth get away with it, the hoodlum went for the jugular. First, she put a dead mouse on Elizabeth's bed. Second, she took a file from the workroom and hid it under Elizabeth's mattress. And then the warden searched for the file in public. Elizabeth argued that it was a frame up, but the warden didn't want to hear her side of the story and quickly left. As the days passed, her boyfriend hadn't been heard from in months. Elizabeth was more than certain that her boyfriend had framed her and sent her to prison. She was so angry and sad that we can't imagine her anger. And then the hooligan came to provoke her. Elizabeth lost her mind and pushed her to the ground and beat her up. It was her impulsive behavior that led to her being put back in the brick. Once again, a tidal wave of fear washed over her. Not only that, the male guards came in and beat her up. Elizabeth's physical and mental torture was followed by something even more horrific. A male prison guard pushed the door open and walked towards her. Topless, even the minister of justice guessed when she saw her being tortured into a coma. She denounces the warden's abuse of power and wants to expose her for her crimes. When Catherine found out Elizabeth had survived, she took it out on her new cellmate, Spider, and she used the same method she used to kill the female inmate on Spider. Luckily, the guards found her in time and took her to the infirmary. Under the doctor's active care, Elizabeth gradually woke up. When she saw the dying Spider, she burst into tears and her heart burned with vengeance. On this day, Elizabeth broke the ruler of the comb with her bare hands and made it into a perfect murder weapon. Blood dripped from her hands, but she was oblivious to the pain. Elizabeth then rushes straight to Catherine and struggles with her. After a few rounds, it's clear that Elizabeth is no match for Catherine, but she won't give up. She's run over. She gets up, and she fights again. Finally, the guards arrive and stop the chaos with water cannons. Catherine takes the opportunity to jump into the underground passageway, and Elizabeth follows her as soon as she sees it. Catherine runs ahead and keeps yelling back, as if she's trying to lure Elizabeth in. As Elizabeth went deeper and deeper into the underground passage, Catherine suddenly fell from the sty and attacked from behind. Since Catherine is a seasoned fighter, Elizabeth is no match for her. As Elizabeth falls to the ground, Catherine's steps become confused in her excitement. Just as she was getting carried away, she suddenly slipped and fell backwards. She hits the power grid and is quickly electrocuted. Catherine died suddenly. The superiors took the prison riot very seriously and sent someone down to check on her. Elizabeth found a chance to tell them about Catherine's criminal activities with the warden. In the end, the warden was removed from his post and taken away, and Elizabeth was released from prison with a reduced sentence for her contribution. The villains were finally punished, but the only pity was for the innocent women who died, who would never again see the beautiful sunshine outside the prison.